Awesome. Hi, everyone. Also, if you're in the back, feel free to scooch up towards the front. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Meryl Gibbs. I'm an emerging industries leader here at Appian, uh, covering business services, including legal, um, real estate, and ESG. Um, so we're seeing growing interest in Appian from law firms and in-house legal teams uh, as the industry is pressured to reduce cost, improve efficiencies, and comply with increasing regulations. So today it's my pleasure to introduce Ken Porter, the Director of Legal Service Operations Group from Inter Ellison, the largest law firm in Australia. His team of technology specialists and consultants use digital technology to facilitate service delivery to their clients. So let's hear from Ken to discover how they're transforming legal matter management and client engagement with Appian. Right. You take it away, Ken. Oh. Thanks, Meryl. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you can tell from the introduction, my somewhat strange accent, I'm from Australia, uh, so I flew in last night for the conference. Really honored to be here uh, to share our story of what we've done uh, with the Appian platform and the solution, but also to learn from everybody else, even just in the keynote this morning, some of the interactions I've had before this session today. Uh, I think it's great to be able to share stories about we, how we do it, particularly for ourselves. We get to speak to a lot of other law firms, a lot of other legal functions within organizations, but not so much uh, with the digital functions in uh, broader organizations or other industries. Uh, so it's a great learning opportunity for us as well. Hardly the bumper crowd, but we'll get started. Hopefully what I'll share will be of use uh, to, to people in the audience. And I'm happy to take any questions either during the presentation, given it's a fairly small audience, or, or at the end is fine as well. Uh, but we'll see how we go. All right, so um, I guess one of the things as to why I believe Appian asked us to, to come and attend uh, and speak about the solution is, we were the first law, law firm to adopt the use of Appian, and to clarify, for the use of what we call matter management or, or client matter management engagement. So the actual onboarding of matters from our clients, the whole matter opening process, conflict checks, right through to execution and close at the end. So I think other law firms internationally um, have used Appian to manage processes within their organizations, but for a client facing usage of Appian, our law firm was the first to do so. So that's the story I'm gonna share a little bit about today. Now, um, why were we the first law firm to use Appian? Uh, legal, for those of you who might not be as familiar with the industry, um, but you might know about it, typically not renowned to be the most savvy when it comes to technology, or early adopters as such, a little bit slower in terms of uptake. Interestingly though, one of the things that's resulted from that is this slide here, which is just a representation and by no means the extent of what the legal tech as we call it, industry is, um, but it has borne quite a legal tech industry. And the reason for that is adoption's slow, right? But there's a lot of opportunity for disruption across legal. So a lot of providers in the market go, if we can create a solution which is honed for the legal market and targeted that audience, we can increase the sales and opportunities and that, you know, be able to penetrate that market. So there's a lot of offerings in the legal tech market for a whole bunch of different categories, including, as you can see right up in the the top right from your view, the workflow tools and other automation tools. There's plenty of offerings in the market, but they are very targeted. Yeah. And the problem we had with those offerings was they were too targeted. Our law firm, as Beryl mentioned, Australia's largest, we call ourselves a full service law firm. So we don't do family, we don't do criminal, but essentially every other type of law our law firm does. Now, if we were to adopt a lot of the legal tech solutions that were in the previous slide, we would essentially need a different solution for each practice across our law firm, which is not what we wanted to do. We wanted to have one solution that we could use across service areas, because ultimately, a lot of our clients work with us across our practice areas. And more and more, we're pushing our lawyers to actually practice across practice areas as well. They take more of an industry focused, they're creating an expertise around the industries and the clients they work with in those industries, so they need to work across practice areas. So practice specific solutions weren't gonna, they weren't gonna tick the box for us. So that's why very long procurement process, we looked at a lot of legal tech solutions, but we also looked beyond legal tech solutions and, and Appian for us came out trumps because of the richness in functionality that could offer, the scalability, the supportability, security, there was a whole bunch of factors in there that came into play, but for really, for us, it was the only solution that allowed us to create one platform that would service everybody across the firm. Now, other challenges to legal. 
uh, and other challenges with impl implementing a solution like Appian as well, is also, I guess, what I'm trying to depict here. Um, in the keynote this morning, a lot of the sessions that I think we'll, we'll hear over the next two days, there's a lot of talk about processes, right? Um, and that, that using the workflow tool is all about digitizing your process. Process and legal, as crazy as this sounds, don't go together that well. Or at least, and, and sorry if there are any lawyers in the room, at least our lawyers don't think process and legal goes together that well. We speak to a lot of our stakeholders and they say, you can't pro put a process around what I do. It's bespoke every time, it's different every time, each client is different, each matter is different. We argue that there is a process that's followed, yeah? but we need to accommodate the differences or the requirements of each, each engagement and, and what the client wants and what needs to be delivered at the end. We need to accommodate that, but the process, the overarching process is the same. So we had to marry up this, what seemingly was a clash between process and how legal work is performed in order to, to digitize it. So it's part of what we did, adopting the Appian platform, but we also created a whole, what we call a continuous improvement, uh, improvement um, function or a process improvement function, but a whole methodology based on Lean Six Sigma, which was about capturing the process, being able to, to represent that process to our lawyers in a way that they could understand and work with them to optimize that process before we look at, digi at, at digitizing it or automating it. And I think, again, in the keynote this morning and in some other sessions I've been in, everybody has mentioned this approach about you don't automate a bad process. So that's what we've had to do, is help our lawyers understand what the process is, help them make that process better and optimize it, and then we look at Appian and how we digitize it. Uh, so what am I saying? Legal's a bit tricky. It's got its challenges and it's a bit difficult, but Appian has given us the power to kind of move beyond that. So, with the solution that we have built, uh, what have we been able to deliver? And a big part of this is reducing lawyer time on the matters that we deliver. Now, why is that important? Uh, many years ago, legal work, uh, I don't know if many of you have had to pay a bill to a law firm before, um, but five, 10, probably more years ago, typically a bill from a law firm would come at the end of the month and it would have a list of lawyers' names and it would have the number of hours against those lawyers' names and maybe an attachment with a whole bunch of narratives about what they did, and it was all time-based. And this crazy concept of the more time you spend on the matter, the more you can build, the more profitable it is. Okay, probably no surprise, that doesn't fly anymore. A lot of clients don't want that kind of billing anymore. They want fixed fees, they want capped fees, or even value-based pricing. Now, as a law firm, we can continue to do what we did before and, and do fixed fees and cap-based fees and value-based, but we're gonna eat into the margin um, of our business. And of course, that, that doesn't bode well for any business, regardless of what industry you work in. So we needed to make our matters more efficient and reduce lawyer time, but deliver the same, if not the better, um, outcome on our matters. So how do we reduce time uh, with Appian? So we've de developed a solution which we call Beacon. Um, it's the name that we've given it. Uh, and it's our matter management solution. Now it's built on Appian, um, but it is not just Appian. It's our cent Appian, or Beacon is our central interface that integrates with a lot of our other key enterprise systems. And if you're familiar with how a law firm works, there's often two we call either a document management system, um, another one being a practice management system. They're kind of our two key enterprise systems that, that Appian is, integrates with. And then also our automation solutions we integrate with. But it's all through that one Appian interface. From a user's perspective, that's all they really see is the Appian interface, what we call Beacon. So, what, what are the inputs into Beacon? What's important in Beacon? Now the process, as I mentioned earlier, it's a given. We need to start with the process and we've got a methodology for how we work with our lawyers to capture that process, to optimize that process, and then digitize the process. Now what's a little bit different about legal is we've got this concept of know-how. Um, and what I mean by know-how, it's essentially the knowledge that sits in the lawyer's heads and, and more often than not, the senior lawyers, you know, the senior associates or your partners. They're the ones who know the practice, who know how to perform it, who know what to do. Yeah. And the difficulty or the real challenge in a law firm is how you get that knowledge out of their heads um, and give it to other people so they can perform the work. Now, no surprise, our most senior people are our most expensive people. If they're doing the volume of work for our business, that's gonna be an expensive way to do work, right? So we need to somehow try and push that work down the stack, and the only way we can do that is capture that know-how from those senior people and put it into our solution so that we can share it with others. So through Beacon, um, we capture the process and we build the workflow in Beacon, 
but we capture the know-how that's part of that process. And we inject that know-how into the process that we build in Beacon so that people at all levels, if you're the one to perform that task, you can see what your task is, but you also have the know-how that you need to be able to perform that task. So it's a really important part of what we do. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the other real key piece to this is that we're centralizing all of our platform, platforms through one interface, being Beacon. Previously, for a lawyer to do a matter um, in, in our firm, and this is the case still for some areas that we haven't reached yet, but in the areas that don't use Beacon, they would have to go into Elite, which is our practice management system, and open a matter, and they get a matter number. Then they go to iManage, which is our document management system, and they open the files for, the, for, for that particular matter, and they can start saving their documents there. Then they go to another system to do the conflict checks, and they do that in there. Then they go to Word or Office and create their documents, yeah? Or Hotdocs, which is our document automation solution. So without Beacon, we required our users to engage with all of those different platforms across the business, and that's incredibly inefficient, right? So we've centralized all of those solutions through the Appian interface. From the user's perspective, all they see is Beacon, all they're engaging with is Beacon, but the matter number is surfaced in Beacon from our practice management system. The files the, where they save their documents are surfaced through Beacon and are accessible through that system. Yeah. And the hot docs, which is used to generate the documents, they can create that generation through Beacon, but they're essentially leveraging hot docs to deliver that outcome. So centralizing it through the interface, that, that saves a huge amount of time if you can think about a user in the system navigating around different platforms to perform their task. Huge savings by doing that. So that's a key part of what we've done. And then of course, this is just representing the automation part. Now, as a law firm, um, one of the biggest outputs with the work that we do, it's content, right? It's documents. Um, what do lawyers do? They create documents. Yeah, these long, really convoluted, very difficult to read documents um, is a big part of what law firms do. Yeah, we're trying to simplify them, write them in simple English so they're more understandable, but they're still a key part of what we need to deliver. Now, for someone to create that document from scratch, either draft it from scratch, or to, as the practice often is, find a matter that was like the matter that you're working on now before and take that document and then replace some content and try and use that. That's one way to do it, but that's inefficient. It's gonna take time. Yeah? Plus, it opens up to a lot of mistakes and a lot of risk. Yeah? Ooh, forgot to replace that client name with a new client name. That's a bit of a problem. Um, so if we automate it, and we ensure that we're pulling all of those necessary data points that are captured in Beacon, through Beacon into those documents, we can generate those documents as part of how a matter is performed and how that output is created. So all of our automation platforms are integrated with Beacon as well. Another huge time saving. How am I going for time? Sorry, I usually do wear a watch, but uh, it's uh, run out of charge because my charge is in my suitcase, which uh, didn't make it here. So anyway, another story for another time. How does Appian improve the employee experience? So saving time is important, but we also, we need, we need a way to improve our employee experience if we want them to engage with the platform of the solution that we've created. Yeah. Um, it's one thing to mandate the use of it, but you don't get the right engagement. So we want it to be a better experience for our employees being our lawyers uh, to use the platform. Uh, so a big piece of that, this saves time as well, but for a lawyer, um, one of the most challenging things about doing your work uh, is trying to find the necessary content, trying to find the necessary information, find the right knowledge in order to be able to perform your task. Now, I mentioned know-how before, and know-how can be in the form of a document. Even a precedent document can contain a lot of that know-how that you need in order to be, to be able to produce an output. Then there's that knowledge, which is just, it, it's, it's in the heads of our senior people. We need to capture that and surface it through the platform. So instead of our users having to search through systems, having to speak with different people in order to get the knowledge they need to perform their work and spend all of that time searching for that right content and the right document, we've now captured that. And now that we have a process as to how our work is performed, we can surface that knowledge and that content at the right time when someone is performing a task. So it's not about dumping it at the beginning of the matter and saying here it all is, we're weaving that knowledge, that know-how, that content through the process and surfacing it to the right user at the right time so they can perform the right task. So that's a huge improvement for, for an employee or for a user, yeah? 
because they're no longer having to search around systems to find the content they need to do their work. This is uh, just one example of uh, what we would call a task list for our users. So when you've got, if you imagine being a lawyer and you've got hundreds of different matters that you're running at any one time or you're performing a task on, one of the most difficult things is trying to navigate your way around the work that you have to do and figure out what is required of you on that, that day or any given day or that week. So with the, the Beacon platform, we built it as such so that a user can come into work at the beginning of the day, they open Beacon and the day's laid out for them. There's a task there listed in order of priority as to what needs to be performed by when, when it's due, how important that task is. And again, all the information is surfaced there so they can click into a task, find all the detail, find all the information. So the day is set out for them. Yeah? Um, and, and that's a big improvement again to the user experience. Rather than having to figure out their day, they can almost walk into the office, log on to their computer, open Beacon and start working because it's all there. But not only for our end users, but also for our more senior users, our supervisors, whether that be senior lawyers or partners, they need to be able to understand the work that their team is doing. So this is an example of a, obviously with some redacted areas. Lawyers love to redact things, so block it out so you can't read it. Redacted areas, so we're not giving any uh, client information away. Uh, but this is an example of a supervisor's report. So a supervisor who has a team of resources can come into the platform and say, okay, where's my team at? Where are all the matters that I have responsibility over? What's the progress? What's the status? Is there a task that's behind? Who's that user? I can go straight to that user and say, where's this task at? Why hasn't it, why hasn't it been progressed? So again, even not at the, the user level, but at the more senior level, at a supervisor level, partner level, or otherwise, it's providing a level of oversight that otherwise would have been very difficult for them to try and gather and understand. So again, it's improving the employee experience uh, for, for that person. Now, of course, importantly, we can't forget our clients. How do our clients benefit from this? So it's interesting because our clients benefit from this at the same time we benefit from it as well. Um, something, just a, a trend in the legal market that I've depicted here um, is the, uh, I guess, the increase, or at least, and this is relevant to the US, the increase in, in the in-house counsel roles yeah, or the in-house legal function roles. So as you can see, the blue and the black lines talking about law firms and government, the increase in the number of lawyers. The orange line represents the number of lawyers working within organizations, and we can see this huge increase um, of lawyers within organizations. Now, why is that important? Because they're the people who are actually engaging with the external counsel, the law firms, to determine the work that needs to be done. Um, and previously, when not as many of these people didn't exist, you could send that bill at the end of the month for hourly rates and the organization had no choice but to pay it because they couldn't understand otherwise. They just thought it was a cost of doing business, they need to pay it. Now the lawyers who sit in the organization understand the work that needs to be done, they have very clear expectations on how that should be performed, so these guys need to have visibility in terms of the work that's performed by external counsel. Even though we're external, they need to have visibility of what we do. So how do we do that? Um, Beacon has two parts, essentially. The matter management side, which is our internal facing solution that our users use to manage their work. And we have a client portal. So there is the external facing, client, client facing part of what we do in Beacon. Now the beauty of this, and what this rather simple diagram is representing is, we, we don't go into the client platform and update anything. Our users do their work in matter management, and the updates they make in the matter management platform automate what our clients see. Now it was a very scary concept for a lot of our lawyers because previously our lawyers could choose what our clients were made visible. Of course, we still do that through the client portal, but it's automatic. As soon as an update is made, the client gets that visibility. Now, huge benefit for our clients because they have that transparency and in, in, uh, visibility on what we do. And it's also a plus for us because we're not having to take as many phone calls from clients saying, where's that matter at? or answer emails from clients saying, how's my matter going? It's all visible to them through the client portal. Yeah. Um, and because it's automated, there's no extra work involved in, in being able to facilitate that. There's a big plus for us. There's a, a real-time benefit for the client, um, which is significant. Okay, so this slide here, this is just giving you an example of some of what uh, the clients get access to through the client portal. But as you can see, there's some similarities with uh, what you're seeing in the screens before. Um, and essentially through this, 
they can see a listing of all of their matters and be able to click into those matters and understand what the status of those matters are. Um, they can also access documents. As I said earlier, a key part of what our lawyers do is deliver documents to our clients. So rather than as was done previously, attaching that document to an email or, or even putting that document in the post to a client, which still needs to happen sometimes because you need a wet signature on it. Um, but now we can just share that document directly from our document management system, which is integrated into Beacon, directly with our client. Um, so again, those integrations being leveraged to share documents with the client through the client portal. Again, for our lawyers, it's a tick of a box to say, yes, this is the document that I want to share. Rather than having to attach it an email with all the content or print it out and get it sent, all they do is tick a box. Um, and then there's a series of reports that our clients can generate. So we have a series of standard reports that we give to our clients, which give them all the you know, standard matter status, progress update that they can access that we've built. But they can go in there, because this is leveraging Appian dashboards, go in there and build their own report from the data that's available to them. They can build that report and we've actually created functionality that allows them to, um, perfect timing, to subscribe to that. Yeah. So they build a report and they can go in and say, okay, I want that report to run daily or weekly or fortnightly, and I want it sent directly to my email. So that it, they don't even have to engage with the client portal if they don't want to. They can use it to generate reports which they can receive in their inbox. And you know, that's an example of how um, some of those reports might actually be surfaced to them. So really important that one. It's a big benefit for our clients. Transparency is such a key thing for so many of our clients now because their organizations as a, as a legal function, they need to service their organizations and their organizations want to know where things are at, what's it costing us, what timeline are we looking at, when can we move forward on these things. So by understanding where their external counsel, our law firms, where we're at, they can actually service their businesses better as well. So it's a big benefit to them. Okay, conscious of time. Uh, what's the future for Beacon or for, for our use of Appian? And to me, this is where it gets really exciting for some of the reasons that I've already mentioned. Now, we've talked about change and transformation, and that's it's even harder in a law firm than it would be for a lot of other organizations. And before Beacon or before Appian, I think I spoke before about we had you know, inconsistent platforms, we've got inconsistent user experience across our ecosystem. That makes transformation really hard because as soon as you're, you're implementing a new solution, from the user's perspective, you're saying, oh, okay, great, now you're just giving us another solution that we have to use. Now, believe it or not, during the pandemic, we were using other collaboration tools. We implemented Teams because there was a real push for Teams. There were a lot of other organizations using Teams. So we said, okay, we need to put Microsoft Teams into play. So we moved really quickly and put Microsoft Teams into play. And, and a lot of our users were really, really happy with that. But some users were going, hang on, now that's just another collaboration sol solution that I have to use. Why are you giving me more solutions? I've got enough to deal with already. So in an environment like that, trying to implement more change and more solutions is not always easy. And you're met with challenges when it comes to transformation. Now, why is Beacon different? For that reason that I mentioned earlier, that we're centralizing everything through the Beacon platform. Now, what that means for users is they might, something might change in Beacon in terms of how they, how they action something or how they access a particular piece of functionality, but it's all in Beacon. Yeah? It's all one central pane of glass. So from a user's perspective, what they're engaging with doesn't change. Yeah? And the level of change resistance that we have within the organization is significantly less. So to me, this creates a whole bunch of opportunities for us to do more in this space because we've removed a lot of those transformation barriers that existed previously. So in terms of the kinds of things that we're thinking about and that we're already working on, so for example, documents, I said we can surface documents to clients um, quite easily now through our Beacon portal, but we want to do document collaboration as well. So a lot of our clients actually want to work on the documents with our lawyers, yeah? and that might require to sending in an email and updates to be made and different versions to be tracked. We want to actually facilitate document collaboration so that we, our client teams and our teams can collaborate on the document at the same time. And we can do that through the Beacon portal. Centralized communication, so we're removing emails and other things, would be really important for us. But then some of the more exciting stuff like AI and sentiment analysis, natural language processing. We get instructions from our clients that need to be performed in the platform. And, and sometimes that can be difficult. And we can't mandate how our clients give us those instructions. So we need ways to be able to intake that information more effectively. So we can use those kinds of solutions to do that. You know? 
and sentiment analysis for escalation purposes. So we might get a complaint from a client, if they're not that unhappy, then someone junior can handle it. If they're really unhappy, then it goes to a partner. Yeah. So things like that we can do with the platform. Um, and RPA is something that we're doing a lot more of as well, uh, and looking at how we can take care of a lot of the back end work, the administrative work that needs to be done. Uh, we use bots in the back end. So we already have adopted automation anywhere, but we're looking at how we can integrate that more into the beacon platform. So a lot of opportunity for us to do things, but to me, so much easier to do it because we can do it through a centralized interface that all of our users are engaged with. All right, so that's time. Um, so I haven't left a lot of time for questions, and I'm happy to take any briefly if anybody has any questions, um, or, or also uh, happy to speak with anyone after the fact. Awesome. Rasaf, thanks so much, Ken. No worries. We so. actually unfortunately don't have time for questions, but I think Ken and I can hang around just out in the hallway. Sure. If you guys want to chat further, ask any questions, we're happy to take them then. Yep. Awesome. Give another round of applause for Ken. That was amazing. All right. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Thanks so much, everyone.